Hello and welcome to my seventh video on string algorithms. Today we'll be going over an algorithm called Boyer-Mohr's algorithm for exact pattern matching. So if you remember what a border is, a border of a string x is any proper prefix of x that equals a suffix x. We also discussed border arrays last time, where in the border arrays b1 up to n of x1 up to n, entry i is the length of the longest border of x1 up to i. The problem we are trying to solve is called exact pattern matching, which giving a string x and a pattern p, find all occurrences of p in x. Last time we looked at the simple algorithm, which had a minor problem that we compare strings we know do not match. Like in this example below, we went over this observation of if p matches at index i, p cannot match at i prime in i, i plus h, unless p 1 up to h minus i prime minus i is a border of p 1 up to h. So if we don't move the indexes into x, the conceptual shift of p is just moving the index in p to index h in p plus 1. This was the basic idea of Knuth Morris Pratt, containing these three subroutines pro, processing, and match, and we also had the main. The running time was showed was order n. Let's now look at a variation on the simple algorithm. In this example, where we use this algorithm, we start setting the index i to the pattern length and match backwards. Next, we increase i and continue matching like we used to. This works as good or bad as the simple algorithm, which is time and space of length of x times m, which is order n squared. But if we introduce a couple of tricks, we might achieve something. So the first is where we look at the rightmost occurrence. So if we have a mismatch at p, j and x, i, and j prime is less than j, which is the rightmost occurrence of the character x, i in p, then we align j prime with i. We'll build what is called the rightmost array. We define array r such that for each letter a, r a is the distance from the right of p to the rightmost occurrence of a in p, or m if a is not in p. This pseudocode below does exactly that. So for each letter in our alphabet, we can look up the rightmost index of any letter in our alphabet. If we update our algorithm with this, we follow these calculations and look up in r. After the mismatch, at i equals 5, our lookup is 4, so we achieve a shortcut of 4 characters. If we have a mismatch at pj xi, then either there is a rightmost j prime less than j, where pj prime is different from pj, and pj prime up to h match pj to m, or rightmost j prime is less than m, where p1 up to j prime is a suffix of pj up to m. The second trick is to match suffixes. We define s1 of j to be j prime if it exists, and s1 j is zero otherwise. Define s2 j to be equal to j prime if it exists, or s2 j is set to zero otherwise. We then define sj to be the minimum of m minus s1 j and m minus j plus m minus s2 j for j 1 up to m and s0 is 2 m the longest border of p which is a special case of case 2. So what is this sj? Well it's the amount we should increase i to get a point where the string matches the suffix seen so far. So we compute S1 as follows. S1j is the largest j prime such that index j prime plus 1 
up to j prime plus m minus j is the border of pj prime plus 1 up to m. And such that pj prime is not the same character as pj. Let rho be the suffix border array, i.e. pj prime is the length of the bo longest border pj prime up to m. Rho can be calculated similarly to the border array, where we say that if p b of p is the border array of p, then rho is the border array of p reversed. reversed. So the reversed border array of the reversed pattern. Now, let index j prime in rho double prime be the length of the longest border of p of j prime plus 1 up to m, such that p j prime is different from p m minus rho double prime j prime minus 1. Rho double prime can be calculated similarly to b double prime. If index j prime of rho is set to index j prime plus 1 in rho plus 1, then index j prime of rho double prime is set to index m minus rho j prime plus 1 of rho double prime. Otherwise, index j prime of rho double prime is set to index j prime plus 1 of rho. Now, let ls from 1 up to m minus 1 be defined by such index j prime plus rho double prime j prime of ls is set to index j prime of double prime plus 1. So just to return to S1, to compute this, we follow the pseudocode below. The last thing is to compute S2. So for each j, the corresponding j prime is the length of the longest border of p shorter than m minus j. Given the border array b, the borders of p are b of m, b1 of m, b2 of m, down to bk of m, which is equal to 0, for m being the pattern length and some k. Given the border array, this sequence of borders of p can be calculated in linear time, since a border of a border is also a border, if you think about it. So S2 of j is calculated as max for some r of j prime where j prime is br of m less than or equal to m minus j, or as the pseudocode shown below. So the Boyer-Moore algorithm. We have a preprocessing of calculating r and s. In the main, we use the updated reversed match algorithm, but we instead jump max of index j of s or max of m minus j plus 1 and index xi of r. This is safe since s of j is larger than or equal to m minus j plus 1 because s2 of j is less than m. Now this would be a good time for an example. So here we see our r, s1, s2 and s arrays built for our pattern p. Just to be thorough. Entry a in r is 0 because the rightmost index of a is at the first index we see from the right. If we had to find a b, we go one step to the left, and of course c is all the way to the end, which is 5 places to the left. s1 is the computation at index j, so at index 4 the largest j prime we can find is 1, because at index 1 plus 1 up to 1 plus 6 minus 4, which is 3, we have BA, which is the border of P1 plus 1 up to 6. 5 and 6 are found the same way. When you go over this in your head or in paper, remember that J prime and J characters must be different. S2 in this example is all zeros. The S array can be calculated by the minimum formula I showed earlier. Initially, we set the pointer i to the length of the pattern. We run the string through like this. First we run hctam, and for each character check if we have a match starting from length of p and backwards, until we reach a first character of the pattern, 
or we find a mismatch. J is returned to zero if a complete match is found, and the length of P if no match. Also, we have a partially match of zero less than J less than the length of P. So if J is zero, we report a match at I plus one. And last, we increment I with I plus length of the pattern minus J plus one, for in that way only to go a step forward if we don't have a partial match and we restart at the first step again. Now, let's look at the number of comparisons we did in this example. It actually turns out we did 16 character comparisons with a length of 21. We actually found all occurrences of P in X in sublinear time. However, the worst case time complexity is still as the symbols algorithm order length of string times length of pattern. If you consider searching for a pattern consisting of m a's in a string of n a's. What we see in practice is that Boyer-Moore often runs in sublinear time on average data. So to compare these two algorithms, first knuth morris pratt is always linear. It deals with repetitive strings as with other strings. Boyer-Moore has an average of sublinear time, but it will run into problem with repetitions in string. The worst case is order n squared, but in practice this is the fastest for many applications. Thank you for watching this video about the Boyer-Moore. We also got around to compare this and knuth morris pratt algorithm. For my next video I will be discussing the Dumolki, Beresa, Yates and Gonet algorithm, also called the shift and or algorithm. If you have any questions about this video or suggestion for future material, please go write a comment or write an email to me, which will be posted in the video.